Psalm 78, and then Matthew chapter 24. Now, with the Omicron virus, a lot of you have heard about that. With Omicron coming out, there's a lot of people who are concerned and fearful and afraid. So then there's concerns whether Omicron, it can cause something where it'd be a high-risk situation that even the, let's, uh, let's call it, let's call it uh, candy, okay? <laughs> let's call it candy for some of you who know what I'm talking about. What they're worried about is uh, this favorite candy of theirs, okay, is going to work out very ineffectively, okay? So they're worried about that this candy over here won't work very, uh, won't work very effectively, excuse me, won't work very effectively. So then, because the candies won't work anymore due to Omicron, here are some of the following articles that shows the major concerns about this. Title of the article from Associated Press is WHO warns that uh, new uh, virus variant poses very high risk. That's the title of their article. They're going to keep adding one more. Tr trust me, this is not the end. Yes, that's right. You need another candy, all right? You need another piece of candy so that you can keep going. All right, that's what people predicted about this. They said that this candy right here that, uh, trust me, it's not going to be enough. They're going to add more, and guess what? They added more, you know. So three times the charm, all right? <laughs> three times the charm. So, <laughs> now, because, uh, and I read another article that says when they come up with this new candy that's going to taste better, it's going to taste really good, and it specifically deals with Omicron, and that's why you're going to need a fourth. <laughs> my, 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 these people. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just taste the rainbow, man. Taste the rainbow, okay? Shall we call it Skittles? I'll go back and forth with Skittles and candy, okay? You all want a candy yeah, after this, all right? So... Because this is considered a high-risk situation, then what I believe is this. This is what I believe. I believe that with this Omicron situation, and especially where people are getting upset about people are not eating their candy right like they should have, and because of that, that's why these variants are coming out even more and more and more, that uh, the scientists, they are, all, they are open. They don't deny the possibility that it can get more severe and it can keep continuing. Now, if we believe that the rapture is happening soon, and if we believe that stuff like this, stuff like these are precursors to where the Antichrist is going to try to act like a savior and come in very soon, then this thing is going to continue through the tribulation then. Now, you might say, why is that? Because of Revelation chapter, uh, look at Matthew 24 first. Uh, let's look at Psalm 78, actually. All right, that's the best place to start. That way we can cover the context. Psalms chapter 78, notice what the Bible says at verse 49. Psalm 78, 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble, by sending what? Evil angels among them. So this is not about the children of Israel when God took them out of the land of Egypt. But he sent evil angels as a plague upon the Egyptians. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from what? Death. But gave their life over to the what? Pestilence. All right. This is what the Bible says. We know that this Omicron is considered to be a disease or a plague. Now, what did God give to Egypt, at, according to Psalm 78? A plague, right? But this plague is considered to be pestilence. But notice that if we look at all of this here, all right, if you look at all of this and you're going to follow along, pestilence, this one is also another word, and it is assimilated with death. When God talks about people dying, 
Sometimes it can be normal death, but at other times you're going to notice that it has to do because of disease or pestilence. That's very important to understand. Now, why is that important? Because look at Matthew 24. Look how the Bible prophesies about this. So Omicron is considered to be a part of biblical prophecy of what's going to happen. It did not happen yet, but it is a little thing that's building up a bigger prophecy of what's happening. Because God is going to send a huge pestilence. And we've always wondered what that might be. Well, we've seen how this situation perfectly set up things for the tribulation, right? Yeah. And for the Antichrist and everything. So we can agree that something like this has to prepare for the Antichrist to come. That's important to understand. That's why this guy is important. It is tied to prophecy then. It is tied to prophecy. So look at Matthew chapter 24. Look at verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. That's the Antichrist, right? Verse 6, we hear about wars coming out, people slaughtering each other at verse 6 and 7. Look at the middle of verse 7, though. There shall be famines, right? So then there's famine happening. And what happens after that? Pestilences. Pestilences. Now, keep your hand at Matthew 24. Compare that with Revelation 6. Compare this with Revelation 6. Why is this one making a way, setting up the steps, the platform for the fourth horseman of Revelation? Look at this. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. The fourth rider of the apocalypse, death. Verse 8, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with them and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So notice right here that death comes out in the tribulation while the Antichrist is ruling in the kingdom. And this fourth horseman sent from Satan from hell itself is going to kill people. Now, why do I believe that Omicron and then later on as it keeps continuing on, it's going to pave the way for the fourth horseman death? The reason why is this. All right, look, look at the steps here. All right, verse 8 is the fourth horseman. Verse 3, let's go backwards here. Verse 3 is the third horseman famine, right? Right? Verse, uh, in verse, uh, excuse me, verse 5, right? Verse 5 is the third horseman famine. Verse 3 is the second horseman, which is wars, right? Yeah. Blood being shed. All right, and then verse 2 is the Antichrist, right? The first horseman, right? Okay. So look at this, death, in order for death to come out, look at the sequence here. Antichrist has to come out first. So whether we like it or not, this thing here has to tie to this. You might say, why does it tie to this guy? Because until this guy comes out, then this guy can come out. So Antichrist's New World Order has to come out and stabilize. Yeah. So this ties to that one, all right? Now, following that logic here, all right, remember, what's the, what's the order right here for the, four, uh, for the fourth horseman to come out? Let's go to the order right here. So then famine, then what? Then it's war. Then we can go over here, okay? Matthew 24, go back there. Matthew 24 is about the tribulation. It's going to say tribulation a couple times in Matthew 24 or, lat, or end of the world. So with, we read Matthew 24, okay? Look at this. Verse 7, go back. Pestilence. Let's assume death is associated with that, all right? Behind it, there shall be what? Famines. Oh, could it be tied to the horsemen then? Go backwards. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. War. Second horseman. Look at verse 6, backwards. Ye shall hear wars, rumors of wars. See, second horseman. 
Antichrist may be then behind it. Yeah, verse 5. Wow. And he shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. See, there's no doubt. So notice right here that there is a pattern and a sequence here. So then this guy comes out first, then this guy second, this guy third, then this guy fourth. Okay, then pestilence is tied to this. And then we see right here that Omicron is a form of what? This. Don't we see a lot of it tied to setting up this guy? Okay, is this confirmed then? We see the current events. It's plainly confirmed through when looking at through all the sources today. Is this confirmed in Scripture? Now it is right here because when this guy comes out, this guy has to come out with this guy. We always wonder what this is. Now we can know. Now we can know. Because in all these, here's the thing. If we can see cases today that can be precursors to this, and we can see cases today that can be precursors to this, cases today that can be precursors to this, why do we make an exception with this guy? So that means there has to be precursors today we see that will lead up to this. Do we follow so far? Yeah. Okay, so then that's the interesting part. You might say, wait a minute, precursors these? I wonder what they are. We know, we saw precursors with this one. I wonder with the others. Now, before I cover those other horsemen, uh, let me tell you something extremely interesting about Omicron that some of you probably know or some of you didn't know. But believe it or not, where people are... A lot of them are focusing their anger and their blame on one of these big names. It's a very big name, and obviously people know. What was he most famous for, obviously? We know that he was most famous for this one, right? Okay, you know what was funny? Is that uh, when you go back to the 1990s, this guy, they released a game, uh, Microsoft released a game called Omicron. Oh. Oh. Now, uh, but they disguised it with a K. <clears throat> oh, but you know what's even more uh, scary about this when you go to this game? You know what this game is about? All right, now, there's uh, people who get upset with the authoritarian, totalitarian current setup, they claim, or they see it that way, right? So they see it that way with everything going on with Omicron and a lot of diseases happening. Now, the thing about these people when they get upset about that, it's so funny where they see elitists or globalists uh, behind the scenes controlling people's life, and some people, they go as so far as to say devils or demons behind the scenes who would try to use situations like this to build up this kind of kingdom in the future. <clears throat> it is interesting. You know what this game is about? It is about a totality, uh, some kind of government setup called Omicron, where devils were disguising to be the authorities in power and controlling these people like slaves. So one of these beings or characters in the game start to speak out. In this game, one of the characters spoke out to the people in Omicron and told them the following words, which is very scary. I'm like very shocked, okay? Wake up, people of Omicron. Reshev and his corrupt government are lulling you to sleep in order to control you better. They have transformed you into puppets that are manipulated by X and the demons. Join the Awakened Ones and rise up to fight for your freedom. Together, we can win. So that's, that's, this sounded like pretty arrowing. This sounded like pretty scary about like what was going to happen in the future or something. Some people said, man, it's just, uncan it just so uncanny. Coincidentally, just matches up. It's like a scary prophecy. This video game was like prophesying of what would happen today. So that's what it looked like. That's what it felt like to the people. <clears throat> so, knowing that one, that's why with Omicron coming out, 
and then uh, Bill Gates. That's why there are people wondering about the elitist or the globalist in charge where all the bad stuff is going on. I wonder that all of this is part of a plan or a setup for something evil and that people are truly being controlled and that there are puppets and that they really don't have freedom, right? So that's the thing of the concern with Omicron. And then the video games seem to show a scary prediction on that one, just match coincidentally. So weird. Isn't that very weird? You have to admit that is very weird that it came out that way. Unless uh, you have studied uh, the Illuminati and occultists that what they tend to do through elitists and globalists in power is that they always do things behind symbols, set up things behind the scenes where they're predicting what they're going to do in the future. But they hide it through subliminal, through messages, through hidden messages. So that's something, uh, Harrow, uh, that's something very scary and something to think about. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> if we uh, understand all these factors here, then let's see the precursors. So we saw a huge, scary precursor. Like, it's like precursors, predictions, and a lot of things about what's happening with this fourth horseman. Now let's go to backwards here. I wonder how serious that would be, right? I wonder ever since Omicron and then the, the situation that we're going through, with this pandemic, I wonder how these precursors are setting up more with the other horsemen. Well, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. It was pretty scary. I didn't know about this until uh, I went through a lot of these other ones. Oh, by the way, uh, for the video, for some of the people who want to find out, you can find it through uh, 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 Twitter pretty easily. But uh, the guy who posted this is Axe, and then it was about Omicron, the Nomad Soul video game from 1999. If you type that one with uh, the sc scary prediction, then you'll find it very easily. But let's look at the third horseman, Famine. I wonder if this might be the case. Well, believe it or not, I'm going to quote you even liberal sources. So even liberals are saying this, okay? This is not some kind of right-wing Christian site. No, I'm going to even show you the liberals. They'll even have to acknowledge this. CNN Business, title of the article, Gro uh, Grocery Store CEO. How we're dealing with food shortages and higher prices. And this is November 15th of this year. In fact, the food shortage is so bad that uh, one person mentioned here from the Washington Post, all right, liberal, U.S., title of the article, U.S. faces shortage of up to 8 billion meals in next 12 months, leading food bank says. Another one is so bad that this is uh, NPR, title of their article, the new faces of pandemic food insecurity. Hungry, worried, yet generous. How bad? The article reads here. This is pretty scary. The estimate is that 2.37 billion people worldwide. How about that? That's one in every three people, representing an increase of 320 million people in one year. Whoa. Whoa, it's so bad that you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Another article reads here that food shortage is so low that they're even searching for cat food. I, I kid you not about that one. So, uh, oh, rats, I just uh, lost that article. Mm. Title of the article, oh, they, I just lost it. But if you type down a cat pet food uh, shortage, uh, then you're going to find out. It was even cat, uh, cat food, pet food, that was going through a shortage. <laughs> it's that bad with the food crisis. So what did the Bible say? Prices are going to go high, right? Food is going to get low. Look at that one at uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal... I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. 
And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice. Uh, let's see. In the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and wine. So notice right here that it is so low that even uh, prices are going up. Now let's think about this one. How about the second horseman, if we were to go over here? What about the second horseman war? Will it be that bad? Well, yeah, it's actually going to be that bad. The reason why is this. When we look at things going on with uh, Russia, for example, right? Tense relationships going on. And then Israel, and then uh, Iran, then you realize we're literally at the border or it just takes one thing that will blow up and everything can go to pieces. Let me give you one article title. I have the article here. This is pretty scary from CNN. This is November 13, 2021. Britain's army chief warns risk of accidental war with Russia is greater than during Cold War. All right, I'm reading to you CNN right here. I'm not reading you something Christian or something I made up. I'm reading you uh, sources here. Here's going on with Israel because they're concerned about the, some of the uh, fellow nations or Iran and other terrorists. From the Times of Israel, so this is their, the Jewish article news source, title of their article, War, what Israel talks about when it talks about striking Iran's nuclear program. So... They're getting ready themselves for that. War is the first thing in their minds, in the title. So war is just around the corner. Yeah. War is just around the corner, and people are getting pretty scared about everything on what's going on today. Now, we look at the verse here, at verse 4. Remember that I talked to you before that because it's a red horseman, that it's going to represent two, two, uh, two groups. It's either going to be something that's communist or something that relates to Muslim. And actually, I taught you in the Gog and Magog War at Revelation 20, that's exactly what's going to be. It's going to be Russia, and then it's going to be a lot of the other Muslim nations. So, why doubt? Revelation 6, verse 4, especially when you look at current events, those are the two main groups you're looking at. Anything that has to do with uh, communist ties, so you can think about Russia, China, etc. Anything that would have to do with the Muslim populace or uh, mostly the dominant religion of uh, the countries which are Islam. Because look at the right here in verse 4, you see the symbolism. This, guy, this red horseman... And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Notice right here that this guy's color is red, like the communists back then. That's why they had the red scare. Red was their color. Notice right here that they conquered by the sword. You look at previous communist dictators. They believe that it was necessary through bloodshed that they can conquer. You look at... Uh, the Muslim terrorists today as well. You look at the Quran and their writings. They also mention about that. Ishmael, it even matches with scripture. Ishmael's job is not to take peace, but for nations to turn on each other. That was the prophecy about Ishmael. Well, the Muslims claim to be from Ishmael's line, and verse 4 would match up pretty well with him on that one. So we see scripture being fulfilled in this case. Now, the big one is this. The big one is the Antichrist now. Let's go back here. Are we this close, Pastor? When Barack Obama came out, everyone was like seeing so many patterns and they were very, 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 very convinced. Then uh, years passed by and then uh, now we're wondering who might be the Antichrist later on. And it is very interesting on how close we are. Now, we do know one clue about the Antichrist. One of the clues, and this is what uh, I believe in, 
And this is what the early Christians and the Great Awakening revivals and the Reformation believed in as well. He, and Revelation 17 even points that out. The Antichrist is going to be tied to Rome. Yep. So then we're looking at the Pope, right? Well, Newsmax article title, Vatican preps for conclave as Pope is dying. December 7th, 2021. Who's next? If, he, if Buddy Boy right here, who loves candies and recommends and gives out candies to a lot of children who become suckers to that one, if this guy's the one that uh, comes out next after the Pope, then think about this. We already have the precursor set up. And if we're seeing how many, uh, we're constant, the title of the video is about this one. Why should we concentrate on this? Because this comes out the latest then. If he comes out latest, this is going to come out sooner. Wow. Even so. Even so come Lord Jesus, right? Amen. Get ready, church. Man. Like around the corner. Yep. Now, look, I take it for granted that it could be that we might have a little bit more time. But I do know this, is that definitely right now we're closer to the rapture than we were before. Especially from looking at these times on very, how very close we are. In fact, this is even more scary. What's even more scary is this. If you were to think about this guy who's supposed to give out the mark of the beast in the future, right? Some of the people are kind of wondering right here, and it got me wondering. We're in a world where they're trying to become more united, right? United and united. We can't be divided. Okay, that's the first step to something, a one world government that the Antichrist needs. But here's one thing that uh, bugged me. These people, are they ready for a one leader yet? Because everybody, they want to have their own leaders to take care of their terrain. But this is very interesting. I thought about this. Because this thing right here is not doing well with the leaders. And then a lot of people are pushing for that one. Let me tell you something. Here's the title of the article. The Wall Street Journal. COVID-19 was a leadership test. It came back negative. Here's another one. Another title uh, of the article is, let's see here. Uh, it's not this one, is it? No, it's not this one. But here's one interesting article title from ASM, but they took it down because it might be controversial or it, they didn't re really release it yet, but they used to publish this. This is American Society for Microbiology. Now, what is the article title that made me suspicious? Because they know this. They were, for microbiology and these guys, they know that in order to control this better, we have to have more of the candy and then the rules, you know, candy rules, Skittle rules, to make sure that it's in place and the people will follow it. But it's combined with as well uh, with the advancement of science itself. With science advancing so well, the candy will taste even better. And then you can have more flavors of the rainbow. Because one is not enough, two is not enough, and three is not enough. And apparently fourth won't be enough later. So then with these candies, uh, they, need, they need an advancement, and they need to concentrate more and more. Here's so interesting how they can nail this virus more. They have, you have to get rid of more privacy. They need more study of your... They need, a, they need to study that so they can, what they call evolutionary history and pattern, and they can nail that guy. But it's so hard when people's uh, information are private or people want to maintain the, their own privacy. That's why some 
uh, countries, that's why they do tracking, because it's better. Why? They can nail this thing. So see, privacy has to be out the window more, where there's more control. That way you can really nail this. OK, and then that's why this private information won't be yours anymore. They're going to have to know. Why? For your peace and safety. As 1 Thessalonians 5 warned about peace and safety, right? But this is one. They need a second one. They need good leadership. They said the blame for everything going on is because of the, the, slow, uh, the slow uh, pace of the science itself and then the sl uh, and also because of poor leadership. So then I'm like, okay, so then if you get all of this under one leader, no complaints. And a lot of people, supposedly the secular news sources, how much can you trust them? But they mention about in New Zealand's case, for example, where they're going really, really liberal and they're really, really having more of a tight fist and control that they were boasting about that the numbers and then people uh, dying and all that is very low. Why? Because the effectiveness of this one out the window, more of this one, and what, and you need a, and they had, and what they had was one leader that did the job. But then all the other leaders are to blame for the spread and the increase of numbers, right? So then I saw this is so complicated. And when I was going by a secular mindset and a political mindset, a scientific mindset, I, I was thinking this, the most effective way is it's going to be fed up one day and they're pushing for unity, right? Not division, because this division is harder to nail this guy. So we need to unite together to nail this guy, but you need one leader to do this. That way the operation can be faster to nail this guy. That's how you get that one world leader, I realized. So you know what we need? We need where people are more sick and tired of leadership. You're seeing it right now in this country, yeah. other countries, that, div uh, that division and that fight, and that's ingrained in us because of, uh, from this country because of the independent mindset. But guess what? It's going to come to a point where they keep blaming the leaders, and then they're going to, uh, uh, they're going to minimize the number of leaders now. From where it can go, like, you know, I'm just speaking hypothetically, that an easy number so you can understand. So where it was originally 100, what if you have a chairman involved or one leader involved for five countries or 10 countries, right? That way we can have 10 kings maybe, you know, maybe things will be easier that way. I don't know, you know. So you get 10 kings divided to their countries and then they have a chairman in charge of them. Then things will go much more smoothly but it's going to take stuff like this. Trust, trust me, you ain't seen nothing yet. You're going to see more. And when more happens, they're going to point out to you, see the effectiveness of when we unite and when it's clean under one proper leader. Then they're going to push that more. And then pretty soon you're going to hit this one one day, a one world one, where it's very effective. I mean, they get... You got to realize this is that what people are scared about with WHO, you got to realize this WHO is united around the whole world, but they have a chairman. United Nations, you have that all set up, but they have a chairman. And for EU, there's something in one of their documentations where they recognize the Pope as a single power somewhere wow. eventually. So this is pretty scary stuff. They, they already ha find it common that there's going to be a chairman for all these united powers. You just need to group it up a little bit more. And then we're this close. So here's the title of the article. All right? The title of the article. If you catch this, then you're going to get it. Don't let the long words fool you. But basically get the idea. They need proper leadership. And this thing, they need this thing as well. Okay? So look at the title of this article. From a American Society for Microbiology. Omicron variant reiterates need. Why? Because they're fed up with this. We don't want more stuff like this anymore. So what do we need? Need for global leadership and genomic surveillance to contain co uh, 
to contain co candy <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> All right. So we can see what's going on here, right? But they didn't publish it. Isn't that interesting? I wonder why. Uh, look at second. Th I'll tell you why. Because the Second Thessalonians two. You know what the Bible shows? There are precursors to the Antichrist. So there are precursors being set up. That's going to be normal. If there's precursors set up for this guy, uh, it's pretty obvious. We saw the uh, the obvious thing with this guy and this horseman. And then now we're seeing it the past couple of years with this guy, this horseman. Anyways, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 shows you there is a precursor. The Bible says about the Antichrist, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of per perdition. Verse 6, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. Look at that. So this is the official Antichrist who gets revealed, but something's withholding him. Why? He's hiding. Look at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth what? Already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He's hiding, that's why. He's hidden. You know what the Bible calls it? How do you know it's hidden, Pastor? Because of verse 7. It says, for the what? Mystery. What does mystery mean? It means to hide from the public. Hidden. That's why they can't publish articles like this. Why? It's, it's going to cause a chaos. Let's hide it a little more. They're not ready for it yet. Until they really recognize the need for this big leadership one day. A global type of leadership one day. And when I mean global, well, we, we got to have democracy, so let's have 10. And then one chairman in charge of that, they would say. Well, maybe like uh, 10 kings in Revelation 17 with one antichrist. And of course you need a religious leader, so a false prophet. That way it looked look democratic to you, right? Maybe that way. Anyways, so we see that things are being set up. But go back to Revelation 6. This is not the big one, all right? The heavier weight is this. The heavier weight is it goes in sequence, right? What's, we forget the fifth seal. We just concentrate so much on the four horsemen. What's the fifth seal when we look at verse 9? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Look at this. The saints get killed. So, the, so in other words, there needs to be people who don't follow the order. So people who don't follow this new world order of the Antichrist, Right? They don't follow along the order. And because they're not a part of his order and these people, then they need to be killed. Okay. Now, in order to understand why this is serious, how are, you, how are you going to get the whole world to kill these people? Think about that, all right? This is going to be probably a little eye-opening, all right? Go to Revelation 20 while I tell you this, all right? Go to Revelation 20 while I tell you this, okay? Think about this. This is something that's a little bit eye-opening to me. Now, I'm going to say uh, as a hypothetical thought, food for thought, all right? This is not doctrine, but this is a very good food for thought, okay? How are you going to get rid of these people? Until you get people today who don't follow with the current system and order and you build up so much angst and anger against them. But how are you going to do that today? 
There is one way, and you know one way how you can do that. These people violate my peace and my safety, they will claim. And they are hateful, and they don't care. They don't have the true Christian love thy neighbor as thyself. And because these people are so dangerous, my candy is not helping me and pleasing me. And because of that, we get these new weird things coming out and variants that's going to kill all of us. So in order for the whole world not to be killed, what can you do then? Why, think about it. Uh-huh, you're thinking, right? So we got to do something about these people. We're not, we're not here yet, obviously. But, you know, let's... Uh, they first, you know, use words, and they call it, you know, we, we ask you. Uh -huh. Then they say, we, you, uh, we make you. It's a demand. Then what they do after that is, then they'll fine you. Then after that, they will lock you up. And then after that, if you really won't comply, then they're going to... Wouldn't that be a logical pattern if you have people that really don't behave and they're not going to listen to you no matter what? If you get that kind of people, then uh, that would be the logical solution. Because uh, don't you think the Antichrist would like that? And then his uh, globalist, yes. His world leaders, the Antichrist world leaders that are setting up for the Antichrist eventually, you can get there. Title of the article from, uh, I think it's pronounced Haaretz, H-A-A-R-E-T-Z. The title of their article is, Omicron may be the final straw in world leaders' patience with anti-candy people. They said this is the last straw. It makes you concerned what's next then. What are they going to do next? See? Everybody likes things to become peaceful, go back to normal and stuff like that. But what they're going to do is that they keep, uh, what they're going to keep doing to you is that we get no peace until we, what? These people right. finally get it resolved. Or these people get fixed. And if uh, they cannot, if these people won't eliminate the problem, we have to eliminate them. Now, how do these people die, though? Isn't it interesting? Think about it. They claim, all right, uh, how people catch this is obviously what they would claim through droplets, right? Or then through the air. That's why they make you go <laughs> like that, right? So then, because these things are done so that it doesn't spread, then think about this. If these people don't get right, what's the permanent way to make sure that you get the job done? That way they don't spread it here. That's interesting how the Antichrist puts the people to death, isn't it? Why would people approve eventually a death like that? Maybe if it has to do with their safety. Maybe if it has to do with peace. Maybe if it has to do, we have to get rid of any trace of this so that there can be full peace because it's interesting there are some reports about you can catch some of this through dead corpses actually for now it's faint but i wonder if this keeps mutating then i wonder how much they're going to blame it's mutating to a point that it is probably even affecting your body because the reason why is they found something in waste water from people's waste the title of the article right here is, let's see here, from Los Angeles Time, right now. Signs of Omicron found in California wastewater, suggesting variant is widespread. That's what these people are claiming. Now, whether it's, you know, fake news, real news, or whatever, I don't know. But the point is this. The point is, is that what if that they can use excuses like this one day? where this disease is really worse than you think, that it's really a part of this body, that the only way to really make sure that it's not going to spread or contaminate people is the source right here. Get it out. That way, this guy don't have to pass it on to you. Droplets, etc. And then the nose as well and stuff like that. Makes you wonder, right? 
Mm. But that would be very interesting. That's why the Antichrist would choose a death like that. It makes it very interesting. It would make sense, too, because uh, when I'm looking at why would people approve such a horrible, gruesome death like this? You know, there's no way they can do that unless there is a way you can do that. It has to do with this. And then it has to do with this as well. That's why. Then it would make sense to me why people would eventually want this guy one day and eventually approve of the eradication of this one day as well. It makes a lot more sense to me that way. Now, the interesting thing about uh, this virus, isn't it telling that it's from a Greek alphabet? Greek letter. Now, why do they do that? Because to, for scientists to keep track of the virus, what they do is that they go in order right here. So then they go from alpha, beta, etc. So then the more, uh, the more popular one you heard was the delta variant, right? Then they, sk then they skipped uh, Z for um, political reasons, let's say. All right? You, got, you guys could probably guess later on. <laughs> And then uh, they skipped another letter because it was somewhat inconvenient. So then they chose Omicron after that. So then notice that they're going through the Greek letters right here. So as the variant becomes worse and worse and worse, they go up a letter. So then it made me wonder, I wonder if it hits the worst point then maybe. What if it hits the worst point where it hits the end of the alphabet? So the end of the Greek alphabet is omega. I wonder if it will hit here one day. Now, let me tell you two interesting things. One interesting thing is that this is from precisionvaccinations.com. So they major and they concentrate on, uh, uh, in this website, they major on stuff like this. So in this website, the title of their article is Israel Prepares for the Omega virus arrival. Israel. Now, what's the home center of all attention for the tribulation, eventually? Israel. If their attention's on this, this is pretty big, especially for something like an Omega virus. Now, there are scientists who would say that uh, they don't believe that it's going to happen, but then there are other scientists who say that it's possible, and others who said that uh, you know, you can never say that it won't ever happen. So we have to uh, prepare for situations like this. So this is from the Daily Maverick. It's a source centered uh, at South Africa. And remember, a lot of the attention is on South Africa when they discuss the Omicron variant, right? So let's look at this new source. Title of the article is uh, Co-Candy, right? All right? The Omega Scenario. And they mention here, which is a little scary, that because the candy is not really building up with people and there's a hesitancy of people taking the candy, that it can grow to a point where they fear uh, that they fear that it won't be effective anymore, the candy. The candy won't be the solution and protect anymore. So they are even discussing this. Now, huh. This is uh, very interesting here. They called it Omega. Now, I don't know why they, don't, they could have chosen many different languages. Why Greek? Why Greek? Then uh, I'm thinking about Revelation. Revelation is all about end times, right? So obviously things like this, will be included, we can agree with this much, right? Right here, which can come from here, is going to be mentioned in Revelation, obviously, right? So we can agree with that much. Now, here's something interesting to think about. Okay. I know, as a matter of fact, 100% disease, okay, that these are precursors. That one I know 100%. 100% this has to happen in the tribulation. I also know 100% this ain't the tribulation. 
What does that mean? It has to build up to something where it's going to get here. Something very, very big. Now, what if, now let me add the what if part. What if this thing increases so much to the point that we hit this one? Would then Revelation have any mention of this? You know what? so interesting the only mention of omega in your entire bible is this book itself Amen. revelation about end times jesus said he calls himself omega now look at the interesting wording here what he does it look at revelation chapter 22 he talks as if he is the omega and as the omega People should have no fear now of being contaminated in their water supply. Now, they, now remember, the news sources profess that this thing has contaminated the water supply. Now, imagine this guy, right? It's going to be really bad. But Jesus talks when he's the Omega that the water supply is pure and clean. Why would he say it that way? Maybe there were people who were concerned about some Greek alphabet contaminating the water supply that they were scared? Maybe Jesus did a play on words and that's why he mentioned that? I don't know. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 22, though. It is very interesting that he says at Revelation chapter 22, uh, ver 21 verse 6, 21 verse 6, excuse me, 21 verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. So he says that, hey, you can take it for free. There's nothing to be scared of. And then I am the Omega. But it is also interesting that Jesus Christ calls, look at Revelation 1, Revelation 1. Notice that when he says, you're going to write about end times, John. But when he tells him to write about end times, he makes it clear first about his title. Why would he do that? Is there a reason behind it? Revelation chapter 1 verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches. So he's speaking about the book of Revelation, right? The end times. But it's interesting when God says, when you write about the book of Revelation, just know that I am the Alpha and Omega. Why would he title himself that way? Because he's talking about a timeline here. Because when you look at Revelation 21 again, go back to Revelation 21, it's about a timeline. And he applies it, he says this during the end times, which is strange. He says here at Revelation chapter 21, and then uh, verse, let's see right here, uh, verse 6 again, right? Verse 6 again. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So everything's finished, he says now. When he, he says now everything's done. Why? The tribulation is over. The devil is cast out. The old world, the old heaven is all passed away. That's why he says now I'm Alpha and Omega. Why would he address himself that way? Because it seems like that the tribulation might have some way, some application to uh, the beginning and the end of this timeline and maybe to this virus. There's an interesting article titled, they mentioned, why? Because they're waiting for the Omega virus, the end of it all. And they said they can't go beyond that. Well, if, that, if you're going to get the worst kind of pestilence, and if this is the worst kind of pest, pestilence and you can't get beyond that one, then Jesus should be the fi finale that would just get rid of everything right here. Now, if that's the case, it's so interesting that the article, they just happened to title their article from Technology Networks, The Alpha and Omega of COVID-19. Yes, the pandemic will end. They're looking at Greek letters for some odd reason. For some odd reason. Maybe it's something that the Lord had in mind and that's why he gave his title. I don't know. But let me end with an interesting anagram right here, all right? You know how Omicron can also go as well? As an anagram? It can go this way as well. 
And remember, globalists and those in power, sometimes they like to hide their messages in the words, right? Or symbols. Could they be laughing at us that when we keep telling you so much stuff, you will believe us and you will follow us? Wow. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, I pray that tonight's teaching have been sober and have been more aware of how the devil is setting up his system and that we're very, very close to your coming. Dismiss us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.